This lesson is called Ratio and Proportion Part 2, and we're going to be covering Standard 5. We're actually preparing for this standard. And the objective for this lesson is that you're going to be able to use ratios and proportions to solve problems. All right. Uh, before we really begin on this, though, we need to do a quick review of Pythagorean's theorem. And you remember, Pythagorean's theorem is something that we use on a right triangle. Okay? And you can see here that I have my right triangle with sides A, B, and C. And Pythagorean's theorem says that I can add the two legs of that triangle. Okay? So I can add A squared plus B squared and set it equal to C squared. And A and B are going to be the two legs that make up my 90 degree angle. Okay? Those are the only two sides that I can put in for A and B. And these two are actually interchangeable. I could have placed those in either order here. Um, but those are the only two that go here. C is always going to be the hypotenuse, which is the side that's opposite that 90 degree angle. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here, and we'll just want, run through one quick, one quick problem. Um, so we have our, our right triangle with a side of 3, a side of 4, and a side of x. And we want to solve this, um, this right triangle for the length of x. So what we're going to do is we would plug in our formula, or our links into the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a is 3, so we end up with 3 squared. And then b is 4, so we end up with plus 4 squared equals c squared, which is x. So we have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then we simplify everything, and we actually, and, and all that. So we get 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16, equals x squared. And <clears throat> when we add 9 and 16, we get 25 equals x squared. And then in order to get rid of our exponent here, we have to square root each side. And when we do that, we end up with x equals the square root of 25, which is 5. And that gives us the answer for x. All right? And this is the Pythagorean theorem in a nutshell as a review. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually use proportions um, to solve for problems. Okay. So here we're given two triangles, triangle ABC, and one of those lengths is three inches. The other one we're given X and Z. All right. And in our second triangle, triangle DEF, we're given an eight-inch length a side that's W and a side that's Y. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to find the lengths of each triangle if the ratio of triangle DEF to ABC is 2 to 1 ratio. All right. So what we're going to do is the first thing is notice that right here it says triangle DEF to triangle ABC. Okay. And our ratio is 2 to 1. So remember that this 2 colon 1 can be rewritten as 2, 2, 1, okay? Which corresponds with this statement right here, okay? This triangle DEF to triangle ABC. So this 2 is going to go with triangle DEF, and 1 goes with triangle ABC. So when we try to use a proportion here, you can see that if we try to find the length of df, okay, which we know is w units, okay, we would place w over its corresponding part on the smaller triangle, okay, which is three inches. So we would have w over three equals two over one, which is our ratio. Okay, and the reason that we did that is because this 2 goes with triangle DEF, and we have the length of DEF on top here. Okay, so those two go together. 1 corresponds with triangle ABC, so there's our 1. 
and we have of the length of the small triangle ABC down below. So you can see that the corresponding denominators and corresponding numerators pair up as well. Okay. So then in order to do this, to solve this, we would want to uh, use the cross product properties. So we cross multiply w times 1, we get w. And then when we set it equal to our other cross product, 3 times 2. So w equals 6. Okay. And then over here, now we, now we want to solve for x. So we do, remember it's our large triangle to our big to our small triangle. So it's 8 over x because those two sides correspond together. So 8 over x equals our ratio, which is 2 to 1, and we would cross multiply. So 8 times 1 is 8, equals 2 times x. So we divide both sides by 2. So x equals 4. Okay. So we have two sides of our triangle, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to rewrite these, these links in here. So this w is equals 6, and x equals 4. Okay. So now we want to solve for y and z. And the only way that we can do that right now, because we don't have a length of either one, okay, is to use Pythagorean's theorem. So let's look at our uh, large triangle first. Okay. So Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a is going to be 6. So we got 6 squared plus b squared, which is 8, because those are the two sides that make up our legs. That gives us a and b. So 8 squared equals c squared, which in this case is going to be y. So y squared. So 6 squared gives us 36 plus 8 squared, which is 64, equals y squared. 64 plus 36 gives us 100, equals y squared. So we square root each side, and we get y equals 10. Okay, so we have the solution for y there. So let's go ahead and plug that in into our triangle up here. So y equals 10. All right. Now we want to do the same thing that we just did, except we want to use our small triangle. So for this, A is going to be 3 inches and B is going to be 4. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A we said was 3, so 3 squared, and B was 4. And C was going to be Z, so Z squared. So then 3 squared gives us 9, 4 squared gives us 16, and that's equal to z squared. So 9 plus 16 gives us 25 equals z squared. We square root each side to get rid of that exponent of 2, so z equals 5. So then we're going to take that and plug that back in to our triangle up top here. So z equals 5. All right, and we have solved for all the unknown links of each triangle. All right, um, this one may be kind of confusing, so um, don't feel bad if you ask for assistance. Okay, um, it usually takes one or two problems to really get this one uh, and understand how to do it. Okay, um, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually apply ratios to a real world problem. Okay. And our problem here is we want to find the width of the actual painting. All right. Now, you can see here that we have our actual painting. Our width is x, and the length is 42 inches. And then we have a photo of the painting, which is a width of 1.25 inches and a width of 4.375 inches. Okay. So I wrote you guys a little um, a little uh, 
proportion here so you can see how you would plug things in and see how the corresponding parts relate to each other. So in our first ratio, we have the width of the actual pa uh, painting. Okay, and our width is going to be x, like that. So we have x over the width of the photo, which is 1.25 inches. Okay, notice that I paired my widths up. Okay, so I have the width over the width. Okay, that's exactly how we want to do it when we solve, uh, when we write our proportions out. Okay, and I'm going to set that equal to the length of my actual, which is 42 inches over the length of my photo which is 4.375 inches okay and at this point I have my proportion now I can solve my proportion so we're going to cross multiply so when we do that we get x times 4.375 which gives us 4.375 x equals our other cross product, which is 1.25 times 42. And when I simplify this down, I get 4.375x equals 1.25 times 42. And I get 52.5. Okay. Now, I need to divide both sides by 4.375. And when I do that, these 4.375s over here cancel out. You can meet with x equals 52.5 divided by 4.375, which is 12 inches. Okay, and we have the width of our actual painting. All right, and this concludes the lesson at this time. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask for assistance before you uh, really dig deep into this worksheet. Um, if not, go ahead and get started and have fun.